Hello guys and welcome to Terrain Noob and Family. Tonight's regularly scheduled program has been preempted to bring you more build and chat. So uh, the boys night out had to be canceled tonight because the other boys are out. So I decided to just go ahead and do some more train stuff because I was really excited about the bridges. I want to get some other things finished up. I got in the mood to paint minis. Uh, just all kinds of things going on. So we got lots to do tonight. Let's get going. All right, so um, you may remember the bridges from last time. You didn't miss much. I just basically black bombed them. So um, we've got our stone bridge here that I think tonight we're just going to all this really needs at this point is some um, gray base coat, some dry brushing layers, and a little bit of decoration, stones, rocks, flock, a little bit of stuff, and th this will be good to go. This, um, our wood bridge here, as I was looking at it, I realized, you know what? This is not going to be a really good um stable thing because all that's holding this together is a couple of stirrers so i don't i'm afraid that this getting moved around a lot as a set piece is going to get broken plus um i decided i wanted something a little bit bigger for this bridge so what i did was i made a nice little base for it so we're going to make us a river to go with this bridge. So um, this is just the pink foam. I just cut out a nice little slab of pink foam, um, rounded off the corners, did the edges with the, the ruler like I did on these. So it's got that same like granite stone texture. And I cut out a little depression in the middle. Um, just used my my knife sliced out some edges about halfway down and then just kind of sawed this out with the knife I could have done this with my wire my hot hot wire cutter but I purposefully didn't do that because doing it this way gives you some some rough um, bottom for the river and I really wanted that because it helps add some depth to it and I also want this to be kind of a more of a rapid section or a swift moving river than just a smooth flowing river. So that's why I did that. Anyway, um, so we've got a good bit to do and a short time to do that. So one thing I want to do is check this now because, so I've got these things um, and I could put this bridge across here but this scenario doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Who who would who would be up here when they could just have put a bridge down here? So there's got to be a reason to be up here. So I think one thing I'm going to do is knock these down a little bit. So I'm going to probably slice the bottom of these off. Now that's kind of a shame because I wasted my some of my two inch foam making these when I could have just made it with this three quarter foam. But whatever. So, anywho, um, so what we're going to do, I think first, is we're going to slice these down a bit. So we're going to get this out of the way for a moment. I'm going to get out our knife, our kniffy. And we are going to cut this like a loaf of bread. Honestly, that's, that's all we're doing. So I'm going to cut it down a bit. I still want the bridge raised up some because I want it to be look like it's over a bit of a drop. But I don't want it this high for that thing. So, And actually, I have found that kitchen knives work well for this stuff. So I could just get a bread knife to slice through this. But I'm not going to. All right, so I got, well, that's that's awful messed up. That's okay, because I can use this piece for, like, ramp of the, well, you'll see. Anyway, so we're going to cut this a bit. 
more. Let's just straighten this out a little bit because I was I was all kinds of crooked there. Again, I could have done this with the hot hot wire cutter, but I didn't. Yeah, I've got a hot wire table. I didn't really want to get that out, and set it up for this, because my garage is a bit of a mess right now. So setting that up is a bit of a pain, and I just didn't want to do it. So I'm just doing this because it's not that big a deal, honestly. And I need some some kind of rampy pieces anyway. All right, so that's cut down a good bit. That I like that. So we need, just need to do the same thing over here. So, see if we can cut this one a little straighter right off the front. Because I don't need that many rampy pieces. We'll see how we do here. That's the beauty of this foam and terrain making is if you don't like how it is, just slice it up and make some new stuff. All right, so I'm going to have, oh, that's a little off. Huh. I'll flatten that out a bit. Still a little weird. It's an awkward angle, but I'm just trying not to cut my hands off. Come on, cheap dollar store knife. Good grief. Where are you trying to go? Can't say I'm a fan of this noise particularly, but you know, what are you gonna do? Alright, that's good enough. Good enough. That's a little bit lower than that one, but that's okay. It's okay. Alright, so now we're gonna ew, we're gonna have to do a little a little touch up with the black after this, but that's okay. We won't have that much to do. Put my knife back together here. So I'll slice my finger open. All right, so here we go. Get our little base back out. That's the spot. All right, so now we're gonna do, all right, so this is the end that goes there. I want to do this a little off center so it doesn't look all square and stuff. We we doesn't want square. And then we'll we'll end up making a little path on here. And should I do this to bring things up a little? I mean, I can blend the edges with with some creative flocking. I'm just wondering if I should do something like that or just leave well enough alone probably, right? I mean, leaving well enough alone is usually a good thing. Hmm. Let's see what we can do here with this. I think. You know what? I think I'll just blend this all in so it looks like it's coming out of a out of a forest and just over a river in a forest. So if we do some trees and stuff around here and bushes and things, we can just kind of hide the fact that there's no path back here. So we'll just kind of hide all this stuff with some creative accoutrements, accoutrements and 
that'll be good. Yeah, that'll work. All right, so, so I don't need to do any more black bombing. What I do need to do is glue these things on. Let's go ahead and get them glued down. So let's do that. Oh, that's really hot. It's kind of cooking the foam there, I think, a little bit. But that's all right. It ain't got to be pretty. We're going to hide most of it anyway. It's, it's all good. Don't worry, Chad. I got this. Don't worry. Don't worry, Chad. It's all good, chat. I got that in the right place. Ooh, it's a little off. Can I fix it? I can. How's that? Better. There we go. We can deal with that. Okay. Get the hot glue gun out of your face. Uh. There we go. All right, so now we have got, what have we got? All right, so we'll let that set for a minute now that we've got that all going and we are gonna start on this thing. So I've lost my palette again. I, so I'm going to get some, just some apple barrel pewter gray. Do, do, do. I need something to dump this in. Where did my palette go? How does that thing keep disappearing? I'm so dumb. I don't know what's wrong with me. Eh, whatever. Um, so what I want to do... Is I want this is basically the, not really a dry brush but an overbrush. I want I'm not gonna use water, but I want it really thick because I basically want to get everything but the deep crevices. So I mean this is kind of like a base coat, but it's not watered down. So I guess I'll just use this because it's all I have right now. So. We'll just go with that. Okay, chat. Is that okay with you, chat? And then we're going to start on the bottom so I can make sure I don't have too much stuff on my brush. And then we're basically going to use dry brushing technique, but pretty heavy handed, to get just the deepest cracks there will, will not get covered. And we're going to be doing multiple layers of dry brush with lighter and lighter stuff, so it's all good. See, that's already looking a lot better. Just with this. And we're not even close to done yet. The other nice thing about this with no water in it is it dries real fast. So, so we should be able to do most of our painting on this without spending a lot of dry time, which is nice. Get the little bits in here. Don't forget the ends. And then we're going to do this part. We have to be careful with this because if we get too heavy handed on it, it's going to be gross.
but we still want the the lines that Jade drew coming through in there, right? But we also want it mostly gray. So this is kind of a fine balancing act to get this to look right. So I think I'm balancing okay. Oop, that got a little heavy. But you know what? It's all right, chat. It's all good, chat. Don't don't worry about it, chat. It's fine. It's fine, we got this. No, chat, don't worry. I'm telling you, it's it's fine. It's fine. Don't worry about it. I got this. I'm a professional. It's all good. We're getting there. This is going to be, this layer is the most time consuming because it's the hardest to get right. The rest of them are just basic dry brush layers, so they're much easier to, to settle in with. All right, put this side. Do, 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 do. So, we have, right now, the girls are out at band practice. The boys were not available for Boys Night Out this week because they had other stuff going on, other family stuff. So, it's just me and my little lonesome over here. So I figured I'd just hang out with you guys, you know, just thought that'd be really, really fun. That's a fun way to spend my evenings if I can't spend it with my kids and my wife. Right? Right. That's what I think. Even if I'm just talking to myself, but you know, it's cool. I talk to myself, and everybody thinks I'm crazy anyway, so, you know, it's fine. It's fine. Whatever. Just talk to myself. Doesn't matter. Get some more of this gray. And I need to get inside these arches. Get inside the golden arches. Gold? No. Oops. Got a little bit of pink showing up there, so we'll just make that gray. I missed it with the black. It's a really deep crevasse. So we'll fix that up. All right, I'm just kind of get the inside a little bit. I'm not worried about the bottom so much. I made it, I mean, I painted it black just so it wouldn't be blinding white, but we're not gonna be really looking at the bottom, but we, we might see through the other side to this side, so we want that. We want the sides done. All right. A little bit more here. That was that was a little too thin. Maybe I will put a little bit of gray here because there's a lot of white showing through. So we'll just cover that up a bit. So it's not horrendous. So 
I hope you guys have actually followed so you're getting uh, notifications when I do little weird things like this because I know I've got a lot of people out there that like to watch the train. Hopefully you're getting the notifications when we go so that you don't miss when I just get an itch to do something like this at an unscheduled time. Alright, so that's already looking fairly decent and we haven't even done much to it yet. So, now we gotta basically do that with this. I'm not gonna paint the uh, river area, so that's not, I don't want that gray. We're gonna do something else with that. And I'm probably not gonna paint the tops because that's gonna be more brown. So I'm mostly just going on the sides here where the rock is gonna be. I mean, it's okay if I get over a little bit, but see, so like, this area and I will try to keep the stuff in frame as much as I can but sometimes it's a little difficult for me because I'm all left-handed and stuff and you know how us southpaws are I mean you know that's just how it is Do. All right, so this area is like it's going to be a big it's going to be kind of a heavily forested bushy area and then there's this on a maybe on a um, like a granite mountain and there's this river that has kind of cut through this mountain and we're kind of at the bottom of the mountain but there's still a whole lot of granite rock and stuff around here which is why the gray because I didn't really want to do sandstone type rocks because they don't really have this kind of texture. You do this long crack texture, that's more of a granite type um, structure for rocks. So, so they go gray. So it's a rocky mountain, but still, I mean, on the flat part, there's plenty of dirt, right? All that. And we're going to get in here with a little bit. Just on the edge here, because there would be some granite where it's cut through. I didn't really texture that, but that's fine because we're not going to see a ton of that. So we just want to give a little bit. And I just get all this where it's been kind of cut away. And this doesn't have, have to be terribly perfect because we are going to have a lot of flock and rocks and trees and bushes and junk and crap and junk and stuff on here. So, so don't worry, chat. We're just getting some base coats on. It'll it'll all come good. Don't you worry done this before actually I've never done this before but it's cool it's cool we'll, we'll make it work we always make it work right doesn't matter how bad we think we screwed it up we can always fix it somehow the magic of glue and flock and trees and paint and you can just fix anything fix any old thing Right? That's what I love about this. I don't have to be perfect. I can just slop stuff all over. I can screw it up. I can cut it wrong. And nobody's going to care. Well, because probably not many people are going to see it anyway. So, all I have to do is make myself happy. Right? That's all I got to do. And I'm still talking to myself. But, you know, it's cool. Hanging out with myself. I like some good me time. Me time is good. All right. Let's get this sucker. Do, 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 do. 
It's amazing that a piece of pink insulation foam can turn into this. That's just always amazed me. And it's not really that hard to do either. I mean, it's not like I'm some super spectacular artist or anything. I'm just patient, really. I mean, this is just an exercise in patience, not talent. I mean, I suppose there's some talent in in figuring out what to use to get it to look this way, but it's it's not complicated really I mean anybody can do this I'm not even terribly artistic I don't think I'm more of a programmer a logic person so I don't know where this bug came from but hey you know everybody's got their thing I guess all right so now we've got that gray going I think that's already looking fairly decent too Kind of like that. Let's see what it looks like with the bridge on it. Let's get a little bridge bridge action going there. That's going to look pretty cool. I mean, the bridge needs some weathering and detailing too. We're going to put some rope across here and the little pegs and stakes and stuff and the end poles and make this look more like suspension bridge. But but and we're going to do the weathering on the stuff. But I don't think the, this stuff is going to happen tonight. So, anywho, let's go on to the next color, because I think we're at a point where we can do that. So, I'm basically just going to 50-50 mix some, some gray and white here to knock this down a shade. It's a good thing about gray, you don't have to worry about color wheel to lighten it, because it's just black and white, so it's always white to lighten, black to darken. So, boy, I'm making a mess on this tile. What a, what a giganto mess. But it's cool. It's cool. Don't worry about it, chat. It's fun to make a mess. Don't worry about it. It's all good, chat. It's all good. Here we go. All right, so now we're actually going to be doing some, some dry brushing layers, so we want to get some of this crap off of here. And this is, it's kind of hard even to see these because I usually will do on something like this three or four dry brush layers so I make subtle changes in the in the color um, but for like rocks and stuff I find out that that the, the more dry brush layers you add the more depth it gives it so I just like I just like the way that looks with more layers so I tend to do that and I just make each one a little bit a little bit lighter, a little bit less paint, a little bit lighter touch, you know. Also, I try to go f from where the light would hit, kind of in the direction the light would be coming down, at least generally. So like this is going to be coming down on the top. And I will put some dry brush layers in the shadow areas like this but probably only one or two dry brush layers and not near as many as what's on the top here. So I'm also going to do the road a little bit, but only a little bit because we just want some kind of um, variation to the color here. We don't want it to look like all just one color, but there's really not going to be a whole lot of highlighting going on because there's not a lot of texture to highlight. some pink foam and some poster board in it. 
paint makes all the difference. You also have to remember that this paint is going to dry a little darker than when it goes on. So even though it may look like it's a little too light, you want it a little lighter than you actually want it because it'll dry dark. So always remember that when doing your dry brush layers. Even if it looks a little stark at first, which it will sometimes, like this one doesn't, but I'll get when I get lighter to do like the real highlights, it may look really stark. But a couple things to remember is A, it's going to dry darker than you put it on, and B, if it's not a big enough contrast, you won't see anything when you're three feet away from it on a table. So you have to make it a little bit more than reality. So we're just going to do a little bit on the inside. Again, the inside I'm not terribly, terribly worried about because it's just so that it doesn't look weird if you see it through. So it's not going to be lit, really. I mean, even really in real life on the table, you're not going to see much of it. We just don't want it to look completely dead. All right, so now I need this color on this. And we don't need much here on these things. I love doing rocks. These are one of my favorite types of rocks to do. I love this. I just think these look so good when they're done. mostly leave these corners of the thing alone. I just want a bit of gray in there, but it's going to be pretty dark. So I don't want to put too much highlight on that. And I'm going a little bit heavy on these because they're the it's so deep that I want to make sure some of the pigment gets down in there cuz I'm I'm going to do a couple more layers. And we want some variation in the color there. So I'm going a little heavy on them, but not too much. And I'm trying to keep it in frame while I'm goofing around and... It's hard to do that though when you're dry brushing because you're slinging the brush around so much that you kind of lose track of where the frames are. But I'll do my best. So the dry brush techniques for minis are quite a bit different than for terrain builds like this, for, especially for a little bit builds that are bigger because like on a mini, if I were doing a first dry brush coat, I would get almost all the paint off so I almost couldn't see any paint on my brush. Also not using near this big a brush, but still in this case, I can still see a good bit of paint coming off, especially for like my first and second dry brush layers, but that's okay because you're dealing with much bigger areas than on a mini. 
Like if I was dry brushing hair on a mini, I don't use a lot of dry brushing on minis, uh, but I will do things like hair and fur. But when I'm doing those, I start with extremely light dry brush layers and you don't need many because it's the, the detail is so small on them. But here, you don't get quite as much paint off your brush, or at least I don't. That's how I do it. You do you, but that's how I do it. So anyway, you try not to get as much paint off your brush. You leave some on there, but you want to get enough off that it's making lighter and lighter layers. I mean, it still is dry brushing, right? Okay, so I think that color's done. This just keeps looking better and better. I'm really liking it. I think these are going to look great. All right, let's go one more color down. So I'm going to go about 25% gray and 75% white. And the good news is we need less and less paint as we go because we're using far less for each dry brush layer. So this one's pretty light. See, it's very light gray. I need to get most of this off. Also, when I dry brush, most people like to use a short, stiff bristle brush. I actually like to use a little bit softer brush, but I do like it to be a straight edge brush. I don't like using rounds for dry brushing. So I'll use different sizes of something like this. And this is, this is not very stiff. It's a pretty soft brush. So I don't, know if, I don't know if it's easy to tell how soft it is, but it's pretty soft. So that's how I like to dry brush. Well, it terrain at least because I find it it I have better control over it that way when it's soft because I can do very light strokes and then find out how much brush or how much paints on there and if I've got too much or too little I can adjust the I can adjust my stroke strength easier and I just have more control over the paint that goes on See, and I just start with really light strokes. And if I need to bear down a little more, I can do that. Because you can always put more paint on, can't take it off. Well, I mean, I suppose you could, but it's much more difficult. So why, why hurt yourself? I'm just going to put a little bit on here. especially towards the top. So, and this is kind of an old dilapidated stone bridge. 
that's um, that's been around for a long, long time. All right, so we're gonna do one more. Oh wait, I need to do that color over here. Almost forgot. This one we're gonna do pretty light. Because I just kinda wanna get the tops of the ridges there. And you can still see the paint going on, but I'm using very light strokes. here a little bit to highlight it. So one of the reasons this dry brushing works so well for these rocks is when you dry brush lighter colors, they tend to get kind of chalky. Um, so it's good to, it's really good for the rocks because you kind of want that kind of chalky texture anyway. And so you get a real nice chalky dull finish on the rocks. So that's always nice nice bonus for the technique so we're almost done with this color layer so that's it for that one so now I want one more um, very light dry brush on here mostly just to pick out the edges and this is going to be almost pure white I mean just a touch of gray in it but I don't want it pure white, but not very much gray at all. Okay. And get almost all the paint off the brush. And then we just want to kind of get the top edges of things. Almost outlining the the edges. I mean, I'll put a little bit here to pick out big highlights and I'll do a little bit up here because that's the top of the bridge where the light's going to be shining the most but I'm not doing very much at all. Not much at all we don't want much. So getting the inside of this you got to be a little careful because you still want to get the the highlights there on the corners but you don't want to try not to get too much on the road here. It's okay if we get a little bit on the road up at the top because again this road is more about just some different colors on it so it's not all one color because there's not a whole lot to highlight there. There's no no real texture on it. So
So. Um, gotta get this side. So there, I think the painting is done on this. I'm I'm reasonably happy with that. Um, need some. I'm I'm gonna do a little bit of flocking, like some moss and stuff growing on this bridge, because it would be pretty mossy if it's an old bridge, old stone bridge. So we're gonna we're gonna get some moss on here, but I'm gonna let the the paint all dry real good. I'm gonna get this one final dry brush layer on this piece, just really lightly going on the tops here. And keep in mind, most of this is going to get covered up with flock and bushes and trees and junk and stuff and crap and things. So it's not that big a deal if we go a little heavy on the top because we're not going to see a whole lot of this rock. But I just want to make sure the parts we do see look right. Okay. So that's that side done. doing some fun stuff. Well, fun for me anyway. You may or may not think so, but but hey, what do I know? It's fun for me and because I'm kind of weird. Anyway, all right, so there's those pieces. So when we get our bridge built, it'll be on like that. So now I think we're going to want to work on getting us some river up in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some thalo blue to start with because it's a nice dark deep blue. Because we want this river to look a little deeper than it actually is. And we're going to pour some stuff over there to make to do the water but we need a base the color to make this look darker than it is so, so I'm, I'm gonna need, I'm gonna need another palette I've made a complete mess of this one let's see mess that up and yeah we'll just put it on here it's cool it's all good don't worry about it Got this chat, don't worry. I'm running out of this phthalo blue. Use too much of it on my on my uh, TARDIS. Used up all my phthalo blue. Oh no. Let me get some water on this thing. Because that needs to be watered down a bit. It's cool, we'll do it. Don't worry, chat. Don't worry, chat. I've done this before. I've done this before, chat. It's all good. Get some of this gray off of this brush. I'll just use the same brush. It's fine. I don't need to dry brush anymore for a while, so. 
So we'll just we're just going to get a nice blue on here as a base coat. It's okay if we can leave a little bit of black. It's not a problem. Because that just makes it look deeper. We're going to keep this away from the very edge. Because we want the very edge to be a little bit lighter. Plus I don't want a bunch of blue going up there while I'm just slopping this around. We'll be a little more careful with some, some more careful brushes later. When we start lightening up the edges. So I'm just going to get this pretty close. Get the edge here. I love this thalo blue. I love this color. This is so such a deep blue. It's just satisfying, you know? Just a satisfying blue. Alright, so we got that going. And I want that to dry. So in the meantime, we're gonna go for some brown on the top here because we're gonna make this all foresty stuff, so we need some some dirt. We're gonna need some dirt, so we want a brown base coat for that. And this blue is really hard to get off a brush, let me tell you. I mean, look how much that stuff stains. That is a deep blue. Deep blue. All right, get you out of the way. Don't need you right now. Or you. What I need is a nice dark brown. That's pretty dark. So I'm going to use this color called Asphaltum. Okay, it's just a dark brown. And I probably haven't, I don't use this color much, so I probably haven't used this for quite a while. But it's cool. It's all good. All right. You see it. This is just a ceramic tile from Lowe's. I use them for palettes, mostly for mini painting, not usually for big things like this, but I don't know where my other palette is, so this is what's getting used tonight. All right, so we're going to get a different brush because that one's a little, no, that's too stiff. Uh, I don't want one that big. Do I even have another brush down here that'll work? No, I don't. Well, I guess we're using this one then. That's fine. It's cool. It's all good. I still got a bunch of blue on there. The water is very blue. It's not that bad. It's fine. It's fine, chat. It's fine. All right. This is pretty watery. So I may need to put another coat after this. I don't know. I may have, may have watered it down a little too much, but it's it's fine. All right, so we're, again, I don't want to get too much on the edge, especially since this is so liquid. I just want to get a nice brown coat kind of in the middle here so that when we're putting all the flocking and trees and bushes and stuff on, it'll look like it's in the right place. And we've actually, we'll actually use some dirt flock later for areas of exposed dirt. But we just want a nice, nice brown undercoat for all those areas. So we're basically just getting kind of a, a color map going here, like this. Let's see, kind of pointing out the places where we want the different things to be and then we'll go back in and make it look a little better after so it's cool but don't worry chat I've got this it's gonna be all good I know it looks a little silly right now but it's gonna be good it's gonna be good chat I promise sorry you can't see this and it's a little hard to keep this in frame because of my whole left-handedness and stuff, but 
it's it's cool it's all good it's all good just imagine I'm painting some brown on there see that's all I did painted some brown on there so we're gonna pull this back a little bit because we're gonna imagine the path is going off back into the forest back here and we'll we'll figure out a way to get that to work right all right so then do this side Good. I shouldn't whistle. Some people don't like whistling. Like my wife drives her crazy. Crazy nuts. So I do it a lot. <laughs> no, not really. Who am I kidding? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. I love to poke the bears. Wife, daughters. Just poke the bears. It's all kinds of fun. What other fun is being a, a dad and a husband, huh? You can't poke the bears once in a while. All right, so our big old cliffside ravine river thing with the the lonely bridge uh, is starting to starting to have a look to it I think so what else do I need to do to this so these rocks are just going to be rising out of the dirt here Let's get those cut those in a little more Just get that all the way around there. Cut this in a bit. All I'm doing is getting a little closer to the rocks. I know you can't see that exactly because I'm having the weird angles here, but trust me, it's not a big deal. Okay, so. Yeah, I think I'm definitely going to need to go over this again with the brown because that was a little too watery. Where did I put it? There it is. But that's fine. It's better to do multiple thin coats than one globby coat. So I don't mind. Like I said before, this terrain building is all just an exercise in patience anyway. If you don't have patience, for the love of all that's holy, don't do this. Actually, I may need to, a little more patience here because I probably need to let this dry some more. That's, well, some of it's pretty dry. Okay. Yeah, this is all dried up, which is good. Good, 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 good. Okay, so that's going well. Now, I 
I need to give it a bit of dry time. Just a bit. So, set this over here to dry a little. And while that is happening, I'm going to see if we can finish up the last little bit of the market stalls here. So I just got a few more little things to do. So thing one is to finish uh, making our barrel of green apples here. Needs just a little more paint. So uh, this is a good brush for that. So we've got a bit of a mess on the edge here where I splashed some paint over. And I want to do a little more highlighting on these so they look more like apples and they don't look quite so shriveled. Good. All right, that's cleaned up. So then, so this shouldn't take very long. It's just this little bit. Then I glue it down, and I'm finally done with the market stalls. Oh, no, I gotta put the, those things up, but that's still not that big a deal. All right, so we're gonna green these up a bit because they're a little washed out. I didn't like that color. So, we fix that all up. <laughs> yes, I see you, little green paint. I don't bother squirting this stuff out sometimes on a palette when I only need just a touch of it. I mean, what's the point? You can just dig it out of the, the nozzle. All right, so then I've got this really light green. I'm just gonna use that for a bit of highlight on the tops because this is going in here kind of in a dark space. So you don't, we don't need a lot. We just need the appearance of green apples because we've got some red apples in there this one I can't get to so it's going on the ooh didn't shake that enough Ugh. that was just medium no color in that alright that's better So we're just gonna put a little bit on the tops here to kind of highlight. Just so you can kind of see the separation from three feet away of the different apples. So that's it, just a little touch. It's all you need. Then, we are just going to glue this sucker in here and get on with our lives. Yeah, get off of there. Come on. There you go. There you go. All right. Put this one back here. There. I got a couple barrels of apples in there. That that helps out a bit. So, one last little piece is the hanging um, sausage links. So our meat vendor, which is over here, needs a couple little bars to hang his sausage links on. 
So we're going to pop these on here real quick. Hmm. Yeah, I better do it from this side. Put this. Sorry for the glue gun. Under a bit of a time constraint here, so bear with me a sec. Get rid of the spider webs. All right, so we're just putting this thing on here so that we'll have a place to hang these snossages. I think I also want one on the front like this. Yes, I do. So we're going to pop one on there real quick. So I keep putting that gun right in your face, don't I? Sorry, so sorry. All right. Yeah, I got it. All right. Get away from me, spider webs. All right, so now I've got these snossages. So I'm actually going to just use white glue for these, and then I can set them aside and let them dry because they will be held up all on their own. So I think I'm going to put the little ones on the side and the big one up here, maybe like... Hey. So the sausages are just, oh, come on. That didn't quite make it. Try again. Didn't quite get enough glue on there. All right. There you go. There you go. Okay. Now. that side dry a sec. All right, so this one, we're just gonna hang off the side here. Easy enough, Ooh. except I put way too much glue on it. It's fine, it's fine. Don't worry about it. All right, more spider webs, yippee. And a little bit of glue here. For this one, and See if I can get this thing to bend properly. There. I've got some sausage links hanging there. That's cool. So we've got our little our little market stall set done, I think. So I'm liking it. Nice colorful little thing to put in the city. So, bye-bye project. See you later in the campaign, maybe. Um, okay, so, now. Whoops. Excuse me, chat. I just threw the bridge across the room. It's cool. It's cool. Come on, focus camera. There you go. There you go. Hey Bacon, how you doing? All right, so tell me that I forgot to bring my flock over here. Okay, don't tell me that because it's not what I want to hear, really. I mean, no. But I think I did. So.
So what I'm going to have to do, yep, what I'm going to have to do, disassembling PVC pipes twice the size of you, fun. Um, chat, I'm going to step away for half a second, go get my flock, I'll be right back. Half a second. I'm almost there, chat. Don't worry. I didn't get lost. I'm coming, chat. I'm coming, but I gotta go the long way around. Hold on. All right, I'm back. I know you missed me. All right, so where's my where's my nice dark green stuff? Hmm. Let me use that for the thing. All right, so so I've got some of this um, timberline block half a minute well you know I was close so what I'm gonna do is use a little bit of this to get some mossy stuff growing on this bridge just to give it a little bit of color so where's my white glue there it is so I'm just gonna get a bit of white glue y'all And we're going to put this stuff wherever I think there needs to be moss. Because, you know, there's going to be a good bit of moss on an old stone bridge, I think. Wouldn't there be? I mean, I would think there would be. Wouldn't you think there would be? There has to be. Can I get it along the cracks here? More glue. Oh, that was special. Really? This glue bottle doesn't want me to deal with it tonight go over there stay good stupid glue bottle So this, I'm kind of just tracing the glue around some of the brick line, because if you've ever looked at old moss or old stonework with moss on it, the moss will kind of follow the bricks a lot of times. So it's just to give it a, a little bit something extra. I'm also putting just random splops of glue on there. Splop. That's, that's the technical term for this promise. Good old splop of glue. All right, so let's work this side.
this is some pretty fine um, flock. I mean, it's just it's not like bush chunk flock. It's just fine green flock. So. So hopefully it'll just look like some moss when we get done. Right now it just looks like a mess. We want it to look like some moss. It will. It'll look like moss. I promise. I promise. I wouldn't lie to you, would I, chat? Yeah. Glear. There's glear. The biggest problem with flock is it makes a mess. It makes a flocking mess. I said it. I said flocking. Yes, I did. I cheated. It's okay. Put some in the corner here. That's working pretty well. That's that's looks good for moss, I think. Okay. Now let's do the top here. I mean, I'm just putting random bits of glue here and stuff, so no special plan or anything. Just random old dots of glue or lines of glue. So there's probably going to be a lot more moss on the top and there would be on the sides I would think I mean I'm not a, I'm not a moss expert but I'm just thinking plants tend to like to grow on flat surfaces more than more than not so Don't want to overdo it because then it'll look kind of goofy. And we'll put a little bit of moss in the cracks of the stones on the road to kind of give some, some more texture to the road because it's a bit flat. So I think this will help a bit. With that, we'll see. Um, so, just throw some flock on here. just got home. Hello family! Just 
smush some of this in there. Make sure we get all this covered and get enough to stick that it looks like something. All right, let's see what we got here. Yep. Okay, some of it got a little, little clumpy, so knock that down a bit. Hello, family. So we just got this side to do, and then I think this bridge will be done, done, done. What do you think, chat? Will this bridge be done? I think so. And since I'm the one building it, I guess that's all that really matters, right? Because it's not like you can force me to keep going, can you? I don't know. Can you? Can you do that? Can you force me to keep going? Streaming stopping me from saying hi. Oh no. Y'all can't stop me from saying hi. I can. Bleh. <laughs> Ew, hugs from teenage girls. Ugh. You're, uh... Teenage girls are the worst. How dare you? I know, cooties, right? How dare they give me cooties? How dare they? Okay, let's get a little moss on the inside of this thing. <laughs> this, I think, would be pretty mossy in there, right? Right? Should be pretty mossy. All right, missed a little bit up here. We're getting there, chat. We're almost there, chat. We're almost done with this little bridge. All right, so. Let's see, I gotta get a little bit in here. That looks like a pretty good stone bridge. Old, just an old stone bridge. Be a good, good fun encounter piece, mm. right? That's pretty good. So I think we can call that project done. I mean, the the glue needs to dry, and then I'll knock it off again once the glue dries. Make sure I get all the loose flock off. But that's pretty much it for that one. Get the flock off. Yeah, get the flock off. Now I gotta clean all this mess up. Holy mackerel. I made a big old mess. And I know I haven't gotten to painting minis yet. I was in the mood, but I was more in the mood to work on this terrain. So, and I don't know how long I'm gonna be on here tonight. So I don't know whether I'm actually going to get to the minis or not. 
but we'll see. If not, just do them next time. Get to the bunnies. Well, I may not be able to. But it may be a good idea just to have a whole session that's just me painting minis because then I can set up for the minis and not have all this other stuff going on. I need to get these other projects finished. So that would be better. I mean, I will do them eventually. Got to do them before the campaign, so. So, any hue. So now, let me get the glue off of this thing. I mean, disposable brush, but why waste it, you know? All right. What's up, Jade? That's not her name. That's my. That's her online name. Don't you know nothing? She picked it, not me. Actually, you guys are the ones that picked it. True. It's not my first name. All right, so. Ooh. All right, so now we, I want to figure out, I need to figure out what I need to do here. I'm going to need some blue shoes. And I don't know. Why do you have so many different colors of rock? Just so... Because I do. How long have you been streaming? I don't know. I started streaming when I started, and now I'm now I'm still streaming. Hmm. So the water isn't quite dry yet. So that's probably going to happen next time. Yeah, I kind of fell on the table and got some. Mm -hmm. So let's see. Get this out of the way. Oh look, I finished up the market stalls. I hung up, don't touch them because they're still drying, but I hung the meat and I got the green apples in there. How did you, wait, where's the green apples? In the middle, in the burrow behind. Oh. And how, did you just did you very carefully bend it? Yeah. Cool. So, I think that looks pretty good. You that guys did one, a good job on those. That one sausage is dragging on the floor. I, know. I don't think anybody will want to eat that. Uh, you you never know. Medieval people weren't terribly concerned about germs. So, if I start sticking a bunch of... I don't think I want to do bushes yet. They need to be towards last. I think what I'm going to need to do with this... Is I'm going to need to get the... the I'm going to need to get the water painted in first. Then I want to get some rocks down in it because I want it to be kind of a white water type area. Then I'm going to want to put the, the, the actual water down and get that straight. So I think I want to do the river part before I do the rest of this. But I can't do that right now because the base coat hasn't finished drying in there and it's going to take a little while so I think what I'm going to do is call that finished for tonight since this was just a little extra stream anyway normally I do this on Saturday mornings um, but I thought I'd pop in here because we couldn't have the boys night out tonight so I thought I'd pop in here and do this for a little bit um, and made some good progress got got two of the projects finished um, and we got some some good lead on this one and I think that's gonna turn out to be a really cool little little set piece and it'll be fun to have some encounters on this and we'll finally have some bridges over some water to do encounters with because we keep having those encounters but we don't have any sets for them so so that'll be nice
Yeah. I don't know about that because I'm not in game. Deal. Still be nice though, won't it? I guess. <laughs> Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I had a lot of fun. I always have fun doing this stuff. This is this is my jam. So, um, it's, your jam? it's my jam. Yes, so, yes. I, yeah, and some jelly. Um, so anyway, we'll be back. Uh, let's see. We got nothing tomorrow. That's that's a day off. Then Friday we got twin time. Uh, no. No Friday. You've oh we've got to play Friday night. So mm -hmm. we won't be on Friday night either. So, we'll be back Saturday morning with some more of this. We'll be the next time we see you. And Jade should be here, right? Working on your mushroom house. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, we'll be back then. It um, dried and now it works. Yeah. It just has a gap in between. Each yeah, week. well, we'll fix that. Um, so, make sure you follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, and YouTube. Mash all the buttons, ding all the bells so you get all the notifications. Um, we'll be back, I guess Saturday because this is just a nuts time of year, end of the school year, all the all the Tomorrow's stuff my going last on. Day as a middle schooler, then I'm going into junior high. Yay! So anyway, follow all the stuff. Um, hope you had a good time, and until next time, build on. <laughs>